Today, we will discuss the ECG changes observed in acute pulmonary embolism. These findings are not specific to pulmonary embolism and can also occur in conditions causing acute pulmonary hypertension, such as hypoxia leading to pulmonary hypoxic vasoconstriction. While recognizing these changes is valuable, they must always be interpreted alongside the patient's clinical presentation and other diagnostic findings. Common ECG abnormalities. The most frequently observed abnormality in pulmonary embolism is sinus tachycardia. This rapid heart rate, defined as greater than 100 beats per minute, is present in approximately 44% of patients with pulmonary embolism. Another frequent finding is right bundle branch block, which may be complete or incomplete. This conduction disturbance is observed in 18% of patients and is associated with increased mortality. Right ventricular strain pattern and axis deviation. A right ventricular strain pattern is characterized by T-wave inversions in the right precordial leads, specifically V1 through V4, and in the inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF. This pattern is seen in up to 34% of patients and indicates elevated pulmonary artery pressures. Right axis deviation, a shift in the heart's electrical axis, occurs in 16% of patients. In some cases, extreme right axis deviation may be observed, with the axis falling between 0 and minus 90 degrees. This phenomenon can sometimes mimic left axis deviation and is described as pseudo-left axis. Additional ECG findings. A dominant or wave in V1, reflecting acute right ventricular dilatation, can also be present. Right atrial enlargement is characterized by P pulmonal, which is a peaked P wave in lead 2 that exceeds 2.5 millimeters in height. This finding is observed in 9% of patients. The S1Q3T3 pattern, while often mentioned in association with pulmonary embolism, is neither sensitive nor specific. It is characterized by a deep S wave in lead 1, a Q wave in lead 3, and an inverted T wave in lead 3. This pattern is found in only 20% of patients with pulmonary embolism. Clockwise rotation, indicated by a shift of the R over S transition point towards V6 with a persistent S wave in V6, is also known as the pulmonary disease pattern. This suggests rotation of the heart due to right ventricular dilatation. Atrial tachyarrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and atrial tachycardia, are observed in 8% of patients. Nonspecific ST segment and T wave changes, including ST elevation and depression, are reported in up to 50% of patients with pulmonary embolism. Specific ECG findings. One of the most specific findings for pulmonary embolism is the simultaneous presence of T wave inversions in the inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF, and the right precordial leads, V1 through V4. One study reported a specificity of up to 99% for this finding in the context of pulmonary embolism. Conclusion In conclusion, a variety of ECG abnormalities can be observed in acute pulmonary embolism. While these findings can raise suspicion for pulmonary embolism, they are not diagnostic on their own. They should be interpreted in conjunction with the patient's clinical presentation, risk factors, and other diagnostic tests. Recognizing these patterns is essential for timely diagnosis and appropriate management of this potentially life-threatening condition. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.